doing this up early this morning. First thing. No problem. Appreciate it. I know most of you are familiar with Great Plains development and what we do and how we cover the area, but what we try to do is stop by as regularly as we can and say hi, here's what's going on, and here's some of the new programs that are available to small businesses out there and to cities and counties when it comes to grants. So just real briefly, I just wanted to run you through what we're doing and what's out there and what things have changed. For, for those of you that may or may not be familiar, Great Plains Development is a certified development company. Uh, we're also an EDA zone, Economic Development Administration out of the federal government. So we're designated as your, we're a charitable not-for-profit organization to help with small business loans and grants. And we cover a 28 county zone here in the, the lower left corner of Kansas. Real briefly, um, you're familiar with a lot of the CDBG grants out there, and I, farther on in the pack, I won't go through it, there's a list of everything from fire trucks to ambulances to sewer and water. Just a reminder, uh, grants for sewer and water are due September 28th, and all the other remaining community improvement grants, if you're interested, are due to Commerce by the end of October. So if you have anything out there that you're thinking about, Faye Trent is our certified administrator. She's also a wonderful grant writer. She's available. Uh, and I also went to school as the new kid on the block as of September of last year. Uh, I went to school and became a certified administrator also. So there's two of us now out here in the 2018 area. So we are available if you need any, any help with community block grant projects. Loan-wise, also in that community block grant category, there are what they call ED loans or economic development loans. Those are available separately through CDBG. And then separately, the other side of the coin of what we do are small business loans. Uh, we work in partnership with banks out there. We always promote working with your local bank first. If a bank, for instance, decides they're willing to help a small business, but they won't, will only finance half of the loan or they need a guarantee, then we can come in and help out and help write the application, maybe for an SBA loan, which is a guarantee, or maybe there's some other programs we can come in and bring in on the side. Also, uh, if, if a small business is turned down, that's not the end. Uh, we're, we're also available for some of the programs that, that maybe a bank would we get involved in. So there are a lot of programs out there. A couple of the new ones. Uh, Startup Kansas is a new program that has a $45,000 cap. Um, it requires a 40-60 match. In other words, if they provide 60% of a $45,000 cap, they require 40% from other funds out there. And that's where another fund comes into play, our Great Plains Fund. We go out and get donations for tax credits, and then we put that into a pool and we loan that back out. So those funds are available to small businesses also. So there's a, kind of a, a whole array of different programs out there. And rather than confuse small business clients with them, we just say, if you get a lead or anyone out there gets a lead, let us know. We'll help them in any way we can. We'll let us figure out how all those packages fit together. Um, the project that we're working on right now that I'm excited about, K-State has come out and said, we'll help. They got a three-year grant to put together and to help us uh, determine what they call an asset map. In other words, I call it a big phone directory of everything that's available in all the counties out there. So let's say, for instance, you end up with a business that wants to know where all the welders are within a 60-mile radius or a 90-mile radius. This will help us get that list together and provide a better service. Um, all of our information is now on a revised website, and even all the forms are fillable and on a website. So rather than have to work with a big piece of stack of paper now. It's easier just to give us a call and let us know uh, 
uh, work with the client directory and we'll we'll see what they have to fill out as far as forms. That way they don't have to fill out big big long lists of forms. Just FYI, I put a list of all the different CDG community block grant programs that are available out there, both in the community improvement and the housing areas. Just also for your information, here are, and, and I won't go through it, but here is the alphabet soup list of all the different loan programs we have available. And that's what I mean about let us worry about how to put them together. That's our job is to help the client figure out which ones go together. And, and we'll, we'll be the ones to help uh, determine what program qualifies for what. But there's a whole list of all the different, different programs. Then for your own information, just because a lot of people are curious, there's three pages here of what I call my stripe that I can't read without my reading glasses. <laughs> it's real small, but it lists all the total amounts of the different pro current programs going on in the county out there, in all, in all our 28 counties. So if you're real curious as to what's going on, there's our list. And then separately after that, I put a Stafford County list for you a very general list of all the different uh, programs we've done since since inception, since the beginning, which have resulted in $2.6 million in loans, 47 retained jobs, and 30 created jobs. We're from Kansas Department of Housing and Commerce perspective, retained and created jobs are real important. So we, we keep track of that. One last thing, a list of all of our members out there on the next page. Um, we invite membership from all of our different counties. In fact, you've always appointed Kim Crable, which Kim has been a wonderful secretary for us, by the way, and we appreciate that. Um, also, you have an at-large, which means if you want to appoint someone, you're more than welcome to appoint someone else to our board. Um, knowing that the responsibility of being a member isn't huge, they're invited to our annual meeting each year to learn about what goes on. And from that general membership, they appoint a board of directors. So our monthly board of directors comes out of this, this list. And if you have Someone that you can think of that you'd like to be a member of our well, membership. Well, Kip Riggle doesn't live in the county He's with his craft. Right. Is he still all he, he's, he's still got two years left on his. Okay, his I just term. started to bring attention to what he's doing with And he has moved to Pratt, you're right. And to be really honest, he's been a really good, active member on, on your behalf to the point of even having some leads in this area. That, that he works on. So he's 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 been really good. And you're right. He, uh, the city of St. John's about to take, undertake a large water project. Have they contact you about that yet, or the... uh, If they've contacted Faye, if not, I can have Faye give them a contact. Yeah, I think about, I understand about three million dollar project. Or, uh, the water system is. And, and, uh, I know there's. A, let me write, out there they look across some of these towns have got Sure, but let me write that down in that way. City clerk would be the person. I guess so, yeah. And sometimes Faye's working on these things and I don't even know, so. And Faye's there is in the initial stages, I think, right now, doing some testing, but that's, it seems, appears that that's going to be a what they're saying, that's the only solution is to... Testing and surveys are a real important part of that process right sort of so. Particularly since water would be due the end of September as far as application. Okay. And to be really honest, this year, they, they've been really good about awarding and applying grants, but this is the first year where they awarded grants and we still don't have funding. Usually by first quarter we have funding and we don't have funding yet this year. They've awarded them but they, they haven't passed the funding along. So we're not sure what's going to happen with that at this 
point. And then a lot of people ask, what are tax credits and how do they work? So I put a brochure at the end that explains a little bit about that. A tax credit is basically just that. Uh, we were in the 75% tax credit range. So if someone donates $1,000 to Great Plains, they get a $750 check back from the state of Kansas right away. Then on top of that, depending on their tax bracket, they may get additional federal deductions. And depending, and I'm not in that category, nor will I ever probably be in that income category, but if you're in a high enough income category, you can actually make a little money off the tax credit. What that does is that money comes back to us and goes into a pool for lending back out. Because I said we're a charitable not-for-profit, we don't keep the money, we, we just simply lend it back out. Is that the main source of your funds that you distribute? Um, it's a major part of the matching funds, but not a major source of funds. Most of our funds come from banks wanting to do a, a deal where they get a guarantee. So they'll come in, maybe look at a hotel and say, we'll do a hotel, but only if they get an SBA loan on it. 75% guarantee. So we'll do the application for the the bank and the client and get an SBA loan. Or if it's a large enough project, you may go after community block grant economic development funds where you get several hundred thousand out of the fund. I see. But, so, the, mon but the monies that it takes like to pay your wages and your other, other staff and other expenses, where does that Where does that come from? We get a little tiny bit from the lottery and we get a little we get a little thirty four thousand dollar loan from, or not a loan, but a grant from EDA. And then on our individual loans that we have out there, we get a, serv a small servicing fee for processing it all and servicing it. And then you also get money, donated money, that's what you were just talking about. Well, it, it gets donated to a fund for loaning out, so we're not allowed to use it right. for ourselves. We're allowed to loan it out to other people. So we are... So you do actually make loans yourself? The GPDI loan comes out of a loan, comes out of that loan fund. Okay. We're, we're, not allowed, we're not allowed to be a bank, or not allowed to be a banker, and we're not allowed to compete with a bank. We're allowed to help out if someone has. Yes, understood. And then part of that comes from a membership. Each of the counties, we usually come out every year, which we haven't in quite a while, and ask for your participation uh, as a charitable not-for-profit. And I'll leave this behind um, for your county at 20 cents per capita, $868.40 would be what we would ask you for a donation for to help. So that would be our operating expenses. Uh, if you're able to do that, that would be wonderful. If you're not, don't tell Patty, our executive director, I said this, we'd be here anyhow. It doesn't matter. Our job is to be here. But we kind of operate on a shoestring. I can tell you this year with all the budget cuts, we're almost 100000 short over the, the previous year. So we've cut back on staff a lot. We're down to Patty, the executive director, and myself, uh, Faye Trent, who's our certified administrator, and Beth, who's our loan servicer. But that's who we're down to. Normally, we'd have six to eight people. So if you would consider that, we'd appreciate that. That would help us a lot. And any leads you have, let us know. We'll be glad to help with, them, with developing any types of leads in the county. Doesn't matter what they are. Grants from community block grants to small loans, anything like that. Now, what about this e-commerce? That there was something that came through that said that they, that, you know, if you apply, you can get, you know, e-community. E-community. Mm -hmm. Through depart. There's a, a group out of Andover called the Center for Entrepreneurship. If you're willing to go out and raise tax credits, like we raise tax credits, 
up to about $150,000 you could raise and put into a fund for you to revolve back out. And it's a brand new program uh, that the Center for Entrepreneurship offers. Okay. So that's available. You'd have to have someone uh, like in your economic development committee out there raising funds for it. But it's very doable. And typically what happens in our region is most of the counties or economic development just say, here, go administrate it for us, and we administrate it. Keep it, keep it all together for them and keep the applications going for it. So that is available. It is available through the Center for Entrepreneurship. You can become a partner county. Uh, the only restriction is you'd have to go out and raise the funds. And the funds would then go to the Center for Entrepreneurship. They keep a small percentage, I think 5%. For administration, and then the rest comes back to you to actually loan out. And we have a number of counties: Ford County, Finney County, Kiowa County, that have those funds available. Those funds are available through them. And what typically happens is a small business will come in and and they'll look at, at how much do they need? Oh, well, they need fifty thousand. And e community is one of those ways that they can. Laying those funds out, and typically, uh, any anything that requires a match, then we can come in as Great Plains and go into our little revolving loan fund and kind of help you with matching by matching whatever you need, uh, because all those matching funds have to be public; they can't be private funds. So a bank can't match the funds; they have to come from other sources. But that's a good. That's good. And if you're interested in e-community, typically it's through your economic development group or chamber, whomever you'd like. We could have Steve, Steve and Eric would come out in a minute and explain to you how it works. <coughs> now, would they say, for example, if the county decided to do that, then would they have to file and become a 501c6 or 3? C3, or? C3, you would... A C6, uh, whatever you have out there that is, like if you have an economic development foundation, mm -hmm. that can be your administrative group for that. So you don't have to create anything special. Okay. Your economic development group could be the people to administrate that. And since I'm not an expert at it, and they are, I'd recommend you just have them come out and then they'll explain how that works. They're really they're really easy people. Yeah, they're with the Department of Commerce? Or? They're not. They're, no. they're a separate group. They go through Commerce. The program is administrated through Commerce, but they're out of Andover, and they're separate from. It's a not-for-profit foundation separate from. And if you have an interest in that, and you've got a group that you want to talk to, I'll be glad to call them up and tell them you're interested in it. Their names were uh, Steve Radley, R-A-D-L-E-Y. He's the CEO. And Eric Peterson, P -T -R -N, is the one that manages e-community. And we've got several candidates that we work with, that, uh, with them on. Uh, Scott Hodgman, Ford, Finney, seems like we have five. Oh, Kyle. And there's approximately anywhere between, depending on how much they raised, anywhere between 70, there's a cap on it. You can go back more than once and raise more money. There's, I think you can get as high as 250,000 in that fund. And then the group that you charge with reviewing it and administrating it can then review those loans and revolve them out and get them back in and revolve them out and get them back in. And isn't that what Anthony did for their downtown after the fire? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer. Because they got grants and stuff. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they got a separate grant as a result of the fire, which would be free money up front. That's probably not a community. Do you think this is a good program? 
it's something worth looking into. I think it's a great program. I was down in Kiowa County before I went to Great Plains. I, I was down in Kiowa County doing economic development. We had six of those loans out there just to get those businesses off the ground and get them started and get them going. So I think it was a really well. Timing is perfect. Set up <laughs> you know this, Jim? Oh, my God. We may have met. Yes. Yes. I see you. Good to see you, too. Carolyn's already speaking on the We have met. We were talking about e community. And you're familiar with Steve Radley and Eric Peterson and all that possibility. So we were just discussing how that worked. In fact, we discussed it at. Um, our board meeting on Thursday, and the board, we, I talked about kind of um, some advantages and disadvantages of pursuing it this year versus next year, and long story short, the board uh, gave me guidance to pursue it this year. Cool. So, um, and, and I've been in contact with Eric. With Eric, a, good. A lot in the last. Because Eric will be cool. glad to come out and explain more. We're um, one of the hometown prosperity com communities, so that's that's put us in contact a lot with Steve in the last year. So we've tr been trying to set the stage She's way down the road. This. Way ahead of us. To answer your question, she's way down the road. That's, that's, that's why we hired her. <laughs> and really, all we did here was just a recap of, of what's available. <clears throat> and you know what's available to us. There's no, no secrets. It's, it's everything from Startup Kansas, which is also kind of scared. Steve and Eric also Great Plains, we have our own tax plan, and other things that are available out there to you as far as if you have a lead. Great. You didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. I noticed that right One now. other note, all of our forms are available online directly in the PDF fillable. And our forms are the same, they're the same across the state. So the, all the CDCs across the state use the same form. And my stop here is once a year we're supposed to stop by and say hi. And that's what this stop was, was stop by, say hi, and explain what we do. I don't think we should be able to go. Yeah, so John Wire, it's yeah. been several years, I think. Yeah, several John years since he was here, yeah. And then I'm a, a new position there as associate director. John was actually our, one of our loan service people. You were at Greensburg before? Yes. Okay, that's the connection. Yeah. That's where you were. Yeah. And that's where they were asking about the community and whether it worked <clears> or not. And I said, work in Greensburg.
I've told you guys to exercise good common sense when you're out there. Paying plenty of input to get in there. You know, everybody says that, but it's hard to do. Um, it's hard well, to it's not hard to do get off that pavement. I mean, when you've stood on that pavement for 20 minutes or so, it's it's just drain. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. hard to stay hydrated. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, even if you get off in the ditch, and the ditch is, the, the, there's some burn, but it's, it's, I mean, it's just reflecting the heat right back up into it. Well, the east side of the annex looks good. Yeah, Jody about had a mishap, he told me. It's scared you. I don't want to hear that. Well, uh, uh, he's safe. Yeah. And so, are we done with the, the mat? Yes, I, the back. I ordered some bumpers the other day. They should be coming. I thought we were carrying that asphalt up further. Basically, the whole lot. Mm -hmm. Well, there's an alley in between there. And then the rest of it's going to be dirt. Well, that's got that. You it's got, got millings on top of it. That village side of it looked pretty good as far as keeping it. So we're done with that. Unless you want something different, yeah. I mean, you know, I just was clarifying in my mind what we were doing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I mean, I, it hasn't rained enough to find out if, See the, if the drain, if we have any drainage well. problems. These two uh, increases are step increases. They're, they're it's their time. Yes, their time is in. okay. Okay, I'll make a motion we uh, increase Mike's swing. <clears throat> From a range six three to six four, and Dave Sizemore from range six three to six four. I'll second. And it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. aye. Motion carried. Because they're not going to get too far out of line from what the state can buy from there for on the price index. I mean, if they wanted to, I suppose they really could, but then. Uh, parking bagger, are you going to have that angle parking like? Is that what you want? Well, it, it looks to me like we started out on that east end with that, you know, when we're going to see We can follow that angle. I think it's, it, you know, it, it, But I don't want to, I really do want to. Do anything until we get the bumper set in there. Well, I understand, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think I don't think we need anything. Yeah. Well, and as soon as we get them, we'll put the bumper yeah. down. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what do you think? I think it's the way it looks like it's laid out. Diagonal. Diagonal looks like it's laid out. Yeah. That's what we're looking at. It won't take us long to put the bumpers down. Yeah. 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 We'll probably just have to pull them up. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. It gives part of the back of the building. They don't turn over. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
there and close. This is our uh, service agreement with Terracom on the uh, monitoring loss. A little less than last year. No. Uh, they're, uh, you'll see in the section D, the scope of services, they're going to purge these wells. That's the initial cost kind of thing. So more likely it comes from agriculture. And we don't have a choice. It's yeah. mandated. Yeah. We just have to play the news the last one. There's two to sign, one there and on the other. Agreement and then they bill us later? Yeah. Not the service later. Second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Two places. Yes.
food. Well, the, the, the plans for food, but they have to, to sign up on the company. So, if I could start off by uh, asking for an executive session to uh, about the personnel. Ten minutes. Ten. 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 It's been mid and second that we got in the executive session to discuss non elected personnel for 10 minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 We are. I presented an um, uh, administrative assistant uh, job description to you. Uh, the focus of this job would be to, um, to give us somebody in the EMS emergency service uh, building that. Um, that can take calls, that can uh, do administrative work, that um, um, can channel all the all the different disciplines, emergency management, EMS, and fire, uh, all the administrative uh, matters in that regard. Uh, and uh, one of the primary roles of this uh, position would be to, to handle the billing and be there available uh, not only to do the billing, but to follow up on the, the billing questions, the billing calls, uh, building calls, and uh, I think we'd serve the customers much better. We'd uh, increase our our collection rate by staying on, uh, and would uh, keep the balance, keep the books balanced with the treasurer's office. What I'd like to do is. Uh, one thing that it did factor into this position too is it'd be a secondary role of the person, but that they do have a first responder status, so that they can, at times, will uh, I would certainly be sure that uh, we'll have times when we when we drop down to we have a busy spurt there, and, and this person can uh, also be that second person driver of the ambulance if. At least we will have an ambulance available and not have to bring one to clean out a great enterprise. We would uh, uh, get hit back to back times when maybe we had to get it out of town. But it certainly would be one of the, the minor roles for the person to play. So, <clears throat> a first responder who can drive the ambulance, can they be? Can he have a first responder in the back? Not if not not, not if an EMT is in the front. It has to be the, the the first responder has to be up front. But the first responder can serve. Uh, the state requires that you have two people staffed on the ambulance. So actually, we could use we could use a police officer to drive, but we have to have two. It's kind of a silly thing, mm -hmm. but you got to have two people that are actually certified, and uh, neither one of them has to be driving. But one of them could be driving, and one of them could be in the back. Um, it's kind of kind of silly once you leave the scene because there's only one in the back anyhow most of the time. But but that's the rule, and you'd have to have two certified people. So you know, we we couldn't roll out the door with, with just one person and then meet up with like a police officer. You, you couldn't do that and be legally following the statute of the state. So the first responder is the minimum training that uh, that you can meet that requirement. And uh, that's really all I see that we would ask of this person. Now, if we had somebody that, that had EMT status, I mean, that's just a plus. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not really the role that we want the person to You just don't like see this happening very often. But it's just no. something that could. No, I, I had uh, looked at our, our data, and actually, I. I created another sheet. I had it on the deck on a jump drive on the computer. Um, but it, it showed our run volume for this year, fire, EMS, and, and then a total number. And uh, our fire numbers are up a bit, but uh, for this year, we're running at a, at a rate of about 1.6 calls per day. Now, that's in a 24-hour timeline, but primarily we, we're probably running most of them calls more, uh, more along the lines of the daytime, the majority of them. Um, so it's not quite two calls a day, but on those calls we're probably, you know, a minimum a couple hours, probably average, but a couple hours. And if it's a witch call, like we took one last night, that um, 
that's probably around four hour out mm -hmm. time. I see the physical amounts of with this employee property uh, one would want to have the, the, the physical assessment of a great band probably I think so. be lifting and everything so I'd right. probably make sure we yeah, we get covered by that basically. I think it's, Post. I guess I think that's what I'd be looking at is is um, authorization for from you guys to uh, post that position. I think I can job description to you. I don't have any trouble with job description. I'm just not sure this is the way we want to go yet. Or I'm not sure that this is what we want to do for sure. Personally. The other, uh, you know, the other option, like I said, you know, we have the option of, of putting billing in the treasurer's office. We have the option of, of having uh, we have the option of doing what we're doing, which which hasn't worked real well. Um, we have the option of uh, we have checked with the hospital to see if they could handle the billing, um, and they have offered to do that at, a, at an hourly rate. Uh, the only problem with that with that approach, or or with the um, is, is we still wouldn't have anybody in the office at times when we're out. Um, we could roll that number over to somewhere else, um, but I'm not sure which where you want to roll that over to. You know, I, I do think in a you know in a, in a smaller um, community like this, there's there's probably people that um, might not be so busy that they couldn't you know field the telephone calls that we have when we're not in the building. But it's not for me to say who those people are. Well, when you're talking about those, what type of phone calls are we talking about? Billing type phone calls? Well, no, the billing phone calls need to go to wherever the billing is being done. Because I, I honestly believe that the, the worst option is to leave it where it is because I think people deserve an answer to their billing question when they call. Sure. And so if, if we were to move it into the treasurer's office, there would be somebody that could answer that. There, and if it was to move to the hospital, we'd have somebody that could do that. If we was to have a person in the office, they could do that. Um, it's the other phone call. So if there are you know, other people that are looking for answers at, at whether it be uh, fire questions or, or whatever questions that they need to have answered. Well, not quite as critical, not quite as critical as, as the building questions. I'm just trying to figure out what kind of questions would be. Well, it would be like one even just so simple as uh, another uh, topic that I want to bring up is a bid for for glass. Um, they were going to bring us a sample, private glass, going to bring us a sample down, but they tried to call and wasn't able to get in touch with us, so they, they hadn't brought it up yet. They were going to bring us a sample display of you know what they were doing. But it's just calls in general that that don't get answered. Then you have a disconnect, and um, folks think you aren't interested in whatever it is they're calling about. And, but we can uh, we can certainly approach that in a different manner if, if that was. But it's not for me to decide who who that who that agency that it rolled over to and would would pick up our phone calls. Um, but I think. Somebody probably ought to answer. I don't think they should. They're an eight to five. They, they should probably get at least a, a human that answers the phone instead of an answering machine. Should it be administrative calls? Uh, just anything in general? What I perceive. Yes, yes, any calls that would come in. Well, if, if this position, they would be doing the billing too, so they, yeah. they, would, they would field all the phone calls. I 
not convinced we need to hire another employee. Especially when you land off people at the hospital and they're capable of doing it. I guess that's part of the main thing. I'm not sure how good that would work. Uh, how good it work at doing it at the hospital? Yeah. Um, as far as the billing, they'd probably be I the most they competent. Could, I think they could do the billing. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of what I thought of in the initial. Uh, you know, the uh, the initial, my initial thought was to put it in the treasurer's office because uh, that's where the money is ultimately going, and, right. and that way it uh, it isn't a it isn't a back and forth issue. Right, which makes sense. It just I goes there, and it's, it's there, and, and it gets reconciled, and, and uh, they have the whole the whole handling of, of the monies that, uh, and don't really need to pass it back to anybody. Um, but the the greatest expertise, well. Treasurer's office has got a pretty good handle on it now, but um, the folks that do it day in day out, which is the hospital folks, um, <coughs> sort of have expertise in it. And that's why I looked at them as the next answer to the question. <clears throat> do you think their hourly rate would be? They haven't come up with a hourly rate yet, have they? Or uh, no. I wouldn't think that it'd be outrageous. I mean, it certainly isn't going to be. Uh, it isn't going to be something that they're going to work working full time. I mean, this is a more expensive approach, no doubt about it. That uh, our well, this is full time. This is going to be a full time employee, right? Yes. So they're going to be entitled to all the benefits of a full time employee. Correct. I can't help but think that the hospital can do it much cheaper. Treasurer's office. Oh, I think it one could do. Plus, I'm, I'm, the, kind of, the kind of feedback or the kind of comments I'm getting is, first of all, why can't the person that's hired to do it now do it? I have trouble answering that question. I have trouble coming up with a good answer for that. Well, those are calls. I mean, if they're doing something like that, they go out to the Apple Strong to Wichita or something. No, like we that. have one, on average, of one and a half calls a day. You know, it's, right. It's, it's taking by your, what you're saying, three hours out of their day on the average. Right. Where, where so, the, so there's five hours left to do this. I mean, from a layman's point of view, that should be yeah. plenty of time. But then, of course, they've got to create their report to get back to after they're on call. I think the biggest problem is, is fielding the calls. If you're not there to fill that building call, mm -hmm. you don't you don't get the call. You don't get the follow-up call, um, whether it be from Medicare, whether it be from Blue Cross and Blue Shield, you, you don't get that call. Because you're not there to take the call, so yeah. you know whether they try to call you back and then they figure that if you're not in, if you're not going to be in the office, the then, then you know to heck with you, and then you try to call them back, and it's it's a I think it's a nightmare to do to do financial work when you're bouncing in and out of the office. I I would agree with that, but I, I think what my, my position is for how much money are we losing? But not keeping you up with our billing and stuff, and having someone there, you know, that can answer these calls. And, and uh, I'm, I'm totally agreeing with that. And uh, I mean, but it, we see what we're writing off and stuff. If we, we can avoid those write offs, it's more than more than pay for it. So we can accomplish that the, by with the treasurer or the hospital as well. I would yes. think. Yes. There's somebody there to answer calls. And yeah, the billing, the billing issue is is solvable in, in those three ways. Is, is that, isn't that primarily what we're after? I mean, the other issues yes. are very yes. much secondary, or even. You know, I I really haven't wavered in, in my belief of where billing would work the best, and that's the treasurer's office. Yeah, that's I, right. I think it just passes over there. Even right now, it passes over there, uh -huh. and uh, the money's due. And to resolve it in the same place where the money's go seems logical. Correct. It works very well in Salina. And, uh, but they they'll have I mean they have all the documents records in front of them on a computer they can pull up and and uh, if someone calls about the bill so you would put a phone number on on the billing that goes out then back to the treasurer's office in. yes so so either a that or just or the hospital whatever it would be yes either one so so if anyone got a question they get to get someone's call right yeah so. the the only issue with uh, 
treasurer's office versus hospital is is the monies are going into the treasurer's office, and so there has to be that continual communication and and passage of information and, re, and remittances. I got this remittance there, you know, here it is, and, and and they're trying to resolve their books because they're receiving the monies and the hospitals, and you, you got to keep that communication link going, and that even becomes problematic for us because. Um, we're doing that now with with our office and the treasurer's office. Well, is it going to take any more personnel the treasurer's office to have it? Or can you do it way here as you are? I, I think we can handle it. Um, during busy tax season, uh, I've told Steve this too, but um, he wasn't too concerned about it. There might be a little bit of a lag where we kind of get behind. Um, but I know that as soon as we get caught back up on our taxes, we within a week would be really caught back up. That that would be my only concern during during the busy time. We might um, just get a little bit behind, but otherwise, I think I think it can be handled with the, the help. That I have. <coughs> yeah. So I thought you mentioned one time you have to do something different. Or Pardon? I thought one time you mentioned baby you have to. Do Parsons East don't help her work. No, no, uh -uh. because you know I hired Alicia to help with IRP, and, and that's working good, and um, and we're staying pretty busy with that too, actually. But um, but no, I I think it could be handled. I'm going to have to redelegate duties to different girls pass more duties down, like what Lisa's doing, pass more duties down to the other girls. It, it's going to be some rearranging of some duties, but I mean, I think it could be handled. I, I think it makes logical sense that uh, that we would... Um, well, they would, they would some some favor, to get the, some the, sort. You know, would, well, there, you're going to have to get the, the bunnies over here to treasure anyhow. The, the, the hard part is going to be these EFTs. We, we get money automatically deposited in our bank account, and we need to have a receipt from that department that day or the next day um, to, to receive that in. And, and that, that's, that's going to be the hard part. Now, I don't know if the hospital did it, if they would take over getting... I, I, I don't know how it would work that way. I really don't like the idea of the hospital getting our EFTs, the county money, just because I want to be, I want to overlook it to make sure everything's. But I think from a workability standpoint, I think you just want to have to let them, because I think it'd be a nightmare for them to, to have to right. call you back and forth. Yeah, it, but, you know, checks and balances is what I'm looking for if the hospital takes it over. I want to be able to do checks and balances with them, just to, you know, accountability. But that could be, that could really cost a lot of, uh, it's going to cause a lot of communication if, if, if it has to, if it has to be, if funds have to come into they, here. <clears throat> now, wait a minute, would they remit back to the hospital that say at Medicare, you, sub, you know, the hospital submits the bill, but isn't there a routing on there where the remittance can be sent to a different place rather than where the bill was originated? Why would the bill even be sent to the hospital? Well, you know, this They're is where the, the I think process. we almost, this gets to where I think we almost need Joe Sheepack and the auditor, because is it, can we have the county money be rerouted? There's the county hospital. Well, they it's don't have our 48 number. Why would it even go to the hospital? Why wouldn't it come right where it comes now? Well, the problem that I can see there is that it's the same problem that we have now. We're we're trying to, you know, we're we're trying to to make sure that information here goes over here, and information over here goes over here, right. and that we're balancing back and forth. Where instead of instead of we launch the bill and then it's over there, and now the the collection process and the follow up. Is taken care of over here. What we're doing is we're, it, we're taking money and we're going over there, and they receive money, and, and, and it's a continual back and forth tennis volley of information, trying to keep both in, uh, both parties uh, aware of, of what's taking place. 
That's that's the issue. And if it's that. okay, that the, that's the issue with what we have right now. Right, and before that, but before that, it was just coming out here. And speaking of checks and balances, that was not good. Not at all to the EMS. Yes, sure. and that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all. Right. So I I think at least uh, you know I I don't have so much concern with the hospital because I think they're bigger and they have more oversight of their overall operation. But we're we're a little dinky old department sitting out here on Fourth Street. Um, it, it needs to the monies need to go somewhere else. I don't want monies coming into there. Periodically, we'll we'll get one that even kind of passes through the mail system here, and we just had one last week that that made it through, and then I'll bring it back down. But but that's okay. But I don't want them all coming in out there. All the checks coming in out there. Just it's not a good. Uh, you know, our, our offices are um, are not real secure out there, and uh, it's just not a place to have monies coming in. And there's not enough checks and balances with that. You know, somebody sends cash in or whatever it might be. It needs to be in a in a more secure setting, as in the treasurer's office or the. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really understanding the difference between the hospital and the treasurer. But I understand there's some simplicity there. But the hospital is strictly doing the billing process for you. The monies don't have to come to the hospital. But they have to be aware of, of when partial they, partial money's coming in and the payments are coming in. And, and, and so, so therefore it, the monies need to come to them? Well, it certainly make it more simple. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, and how, how would that be done? Would the hospital I, just yeah, give us a check every month for what they say they collected for us? I, I mean, I, I don't know. know. I don't know about that. I have no idea. <laughs> All I know is, is when, it, when, it, when it gets launched and, and and the collection process starts, I think that's where you know uh, that's where the follow up should come from too. Well I so think for you know, my, my position every gonna have between the hospital and the treasurer, I think you should do the treasurer's office. I'll have it shoved around from here to here to here. It's directly here this account gets it goes back to the county tax money anyhow. That makes sense. It makes right. more sense to just have it come up here if it the if, if board. I mean if you can if you keep keep everyone so you're saying still have the money come to the treasurer's office, but let the hospital. You no, know, I'm saying let let you be you know, responsible for the work and and the collections and the billings and and come back to you, oh. not to go some other entity, just straight to you. That's where it comes back to the county. Anyhow, you're supposed to have the money up here. Yeah, every day anyhow, comes aren't back. You? Yeah, all money comes to the treasurer's office anyway. Eventually, yeah. I'm just trying to get the biggest bang for a buck. That's, that's sure. my goal. I, I, I have another question. I, I'm pretty sure I remember that this billing being part of the job description of whatever job it is, mm -hmm. and that will no longer be their job description. Will they take well, they still, day or what will happen there? They would still handle the the processing of the bill. It would just not be the. They just wouldn't handle the follow up. I see. And you know, like you said, uh, Roger, you know that time-wise, it's probably we're we're fixing a lot of bad, you know, mistakes in the past that we that were we've been told, that we've been catching up on. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as keeping up, I, I think the keep up can be there. Uh, the problem is that it's it, it's still not a, a good system to bounce things back and forth, in my opinion. And the other part of the of the problem with with just catching up and then doing keeping doing it out there. Is is the follow up? Is the follow up with the people and being able to follow back up instead of getting sent to Wichita for four hours and then the day is gone and you never did follow up with the person because it's five thirty. Right. Right. So now they're going to wait till tomorrow and they're sense. not happy and, and understandably so. But right. what could we do? We, we were in Wichita. So so the, the person this job that is to write the billing to, to launch the bill. They'll still, still be doing, doing that. Yes. So their job description really hasn't changed. No. But all we're changing is basically the follow up part of it. Correct. Right. I see. Okay. That makes sense. So that so there, there's oh, okay. Yeah. That part of it. And, stays and I can tell you that there's some things, you know, that uh, that certainly even that person could do as far as making it around and making sure ambulances are, are properly stopped and, and ready to go that um, 
that could use some improvement, but I can't take them off the building to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, we, we suffer a little bit in that regard that, you know, this will make it a little bit better in that regard if, if they're not doing the follow-up. By having them. Yes. Another. Well, or what, whatever. The building being done somewhere else. Any of that would help. Any of that is going to help. Okay. okay. You want me to get with, um, if, if you want to entertain the other option, then um, I, I think the, the stumbling, only stumbling block with, with that approach is that um, Lisa believes, which, which I believe she's correct, that if you're going to ask somebody to take on uh, an added role, that, that it, would, it would make sense to have some uh, change in compensation. So, that's the that's probably the stumbling block of, of the transition to the treasurer's office is what what that fair compensation would be. Whatever it is, going to be less than that <laughs> by leaps and bounds. Well, yeah, we got we're going to invest this much money in something. We have the option of paying the hospital a set fee, whatever that is. That's right. We don't really know because we don't know how many hours it's going to take and what their billing rate is. Correct. But we have the option to move it to the treasurer's office. At least, Lisa has said they can absorb the workload. workload without any additional employees. But what you're saying is they're going to be working harder and so they deserve more money. I, I think that's what Lisa's telling me that I, I would be in agreement. Get with, is that your direction? You want me to get with Lisa and see what that Didn't hurt anything approach would be? You. <laughs> oh, is it going to take more training or something to do this? I kind of don't want to do that. I wouldn't mind. Um, I think the, you've talked, the hospital really has a, a good system. I wouldn't mind, yeah, having. Um, doing some job shadowing and just maybe go watch in the hospital how they do it for a week or two? Actually, you know? a good person to go watch is Michelle and Britt. And, okay. Uh, that's where I sent Nesty. I sent Nesty up there uh, to, uh, to shadow their, their billing person because she's been doing it a long time and she's darn good at it. So yeah, I, I would definitely. But there is follow-up training that, that they really need to, uh, to attend. It's not you know, it's not often, but they do need to follow up on, you know, stay. There's a group that, that meets periodically, and they need to, uh, they need to make sure. And Changes of better care is the right to be aware of, yes. And I, I mean, I don't know, I'd like to check into the possibility of using the clearinghouse, like what Clayton was talking about, the hospital does Well, <coughs> I don't know I, much about You know, that. this has been several years ago. Maybe the mechanics have changed, but I do I do know that when the, when the bill is launched, it goes somewhere, and it's looked over before it's sent on to CMS or Medicare yeah. or whatever you want to call it. Um, my quandary is, you know, we have people over at the hospital that are already trained on coding and, and know how to do this. Uh, on the other hand, we don't know about how the money is handled. Um, you know, the treasurer's office, you know, that it, it'd be convenient if the bill is launched in the treasurer's office, the money comes right back into the treasurer's office. <coughs> um, I don't know <clears throat> if people in the treasurer's office, you know, has the expertise in knowing how to answer questions medically related and code wise and so on and so forth. So that's it'll be a learning curve. You know, if we create a position we'd have the same, we'd have to train the person, yes. you know, and so they can follow the I C nine handbook and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think we definitely need someone to have answers when questions come in regarding bill. I agree. Um, 
So we're down to one of two things, either the treasurer's office or the, or the hospital doing the bill. I'm leaning more toward the hospital, but the question is about what about remittance? You know, how is how is that handled? And I think we need to find that out before we make a decision. I could I could support the hospital if those questions could be answered. I I honestly I think it's going to be herky jerky if they can't receive the money. I mean I I think it's going to be a pain in the neck if they have to constantly communicate back and forth about. We got 50 bucks, we got 100 bucks, we don't know where that went. We got 75 bucks, we don't know where that went. And if they have it all, then they, they kind of have the, the answer to them questions. Yeah, if, if, it, goes, if it comes up to the hospital and if we're, the money's supposed to go to the treasurer's office anyhow, right? That's going to end up. Yeah, they, they would have to send it uh, to me somehow. Uh, I thought yeah. it supposed to be daily. Aren't you supposed to? Yes. Are receipts supposed to be of our daily? Yes, they're supposed to be daily. And, and there will be some electronically filed deposited. That's what really can mess you up. That's really because it's in the account in here, but you yeah. haven't received any information. Right. So our books are wrong. If I show more money in the bank than what the county's books show, until somebody gives me proof of documentation of what they've received into their department. So you have the advantage the of the hospital knowing you know, what they're doing and yeah. the billing being done correctly with very little training of any. But you have the ability, the, the advantage of just the efficiency of the system being the money down to the hospital. You have to make decisions easy for us. Well, let's find out about that. Then we have the advantage of this employee being there to do it. And I think we need I'm to totally ask totally just about that, that too, and the auditors about if, if, if that's. The person who needed more, this would be the simplest and easiest solution. I think the less hand of the bill stream, the better it's done. But originated here, you know, like you bring it up here to the station here, and it comes back to here. If you've got to reach that view and go to there and come back to here, you've got to have more hands in this group. Less hands in this group, that also means people more accuracy on Medicare billing, anytime you deal with that stuff, it's just got to be perfect or it gets rejected and it's 90 days before they mess with it. And it's just what a mess. It's not a sentence for you and I. Right. Um, Lisa and I have to get together. We'll have a we'll um, we'll have kind of a proposal as far as what the compensation recommendation would be, and then we'll also get an answer, try to get an answer on the uh, the hospital issue if, if monies can just go directly to them, um, and then they submit a check here periodically. I we just truck trip for funds, didn't you? Also, you need to know what they're going to charge. I mean, count to your an hourly and have some idea how many hours, we're, I mean, what it's going to cost them. You know, right. And compare that to what Lisa's compensation package she needs. I mean, yeah, we, uh, there's no way to know exactly what that might be. We'll no, we can both idea. Yeah, we can both I mean, I'm, you know, I'm here to make sure we can do this with the least amount possible. Okay. Um, an ambulance update. We 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 got the brand new one back, and it just has some tightening around some um, fuel filters, and hopefully that's it. Went to wish all last night, so it ran well. So and we, and we got our other, and we made it back. And the other one came back. Uh, I haven't got the bill on that, but that was the one that our second newest one that had some injectors that were already out. So we've got that one back too. Um, we. We have had, uh, these are, just, I don't have a copy for them, but they're, they're just a big drop tank. Um, what we've done, and this is along the lines of fire, what we've done in the past is we've had one that's on a, a truck, and it's, uh, I believe it's stationed at Seward, but what it's kind of designed at is, is a, a transfer, a water transfer truck, and so it would come to the scene and drop a tank, and, uh, and then it would pump it off to the other trucks. Uh, it, it works well. The only problem being that we just have one. And um, what we'd really like to do is, is get another one, another drop tank, so we wouldn't be as um, tied into this truck 
the stuff set up a sewer and having to, to go anywhere in the county, we could uh, we could put another one at a, at a central location that we wouldn't necessarily have, but the trucks can draft off of it. And, and, and the advantage of that, uh, for an example, would be we had the fire south of town here the other day, and Iuka shows up with, with, their, with their tanker. Well, they're pretty much relegated to stay there the entire three hours because they got the water and we don't have a tank to drop it into. So uh, we'd really like to have a tank that we could, another tank that we could set. Uh, the price on a $3,500, we actually got a, a bid from Watts, who's doing the refurb on the on the truck up, uh, up at Hudson, was $1,365. We have, we certainly have that in, in our line item. Um, but that's what we'd like to do is buy another. Where do you, how you haul these out there? They'll be right on the on the tanker. It'll be on the top of the tanker. Oh, and it slides off. Or? It it folds up. It folds up in a nice package. Oh, and then it all it's plastic, plastic, right? Uh, no, it's uh, aluminum. So the, the tank itself. The aluminum. tank itself is uh, is the <coughs> the tarp style. You know, right? So you just run out there, dump it off on the road, and uh, wherever wherever you're setting where you're at, the, the water shovel right, 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 like a big portable swimming pool. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, like a big portable swimming pool. So that's so actually, actually, that's that's so people would be haul water into it then if you need to do it, then and the big pool. Correct. They just pop out. And it, yeah, they, they, they just transfer water off of it. So we we used it uh, we used it up at up north here a week or so ago and it worked out really well. But uh, that one was right where we had the tank. And, and was that, that big on fire? It was. Uh, the problem was is you know there was what was on fire. I mean the shelter belt. It was hundreds of tires. It was six, seven, eight cars. So it just had a lot of uh, a lot of fuel, and, and it was really dry back in that shelter belt. So it. Um, yeah. The one we got another bid there it was like nine dollars cheaper, but um, it didn't make much sense to get it from. Uh, we'd really just prefer to get it from the uh, the outfit that's, that's building the doing the refurb on our Hudson tanker. They can get it and uh, and outfit it and bring it right back. Where would you keep it? I think actually it, it would be at Hudson because it's it's probably fairly central point that uh, right now we have good response in Hudson um, and it would come with that tanker that's being refurbed. So when it comes, it it sets up. Do you have a tanker and sewer too? We have one that's actually, that's the one that we're having refurbed. That we're going through and putting a new tank on and banking it and everything. So, we'll, so then will you leave the, the swimming pool and sewer? It, it is actually, that one is presently on, on, a, on a little pickup style truck. Oh, it is. Oh. And, and that one's just solely for that purpose. It, uh, it, you just set it up, and then it's got a little pump on the back of it. And so what it does, it just pumps it off. It, it doesn't you know, carry water on that truck. It's just solely uh, kind of haul the haul the tank. And so on weekends, they're not supposed to put it out, and, and the kids all in town swim in? No, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. It, it kind of, uh, to me, the, sure concept, the concept wasn't really that bad, but Roger it. <laughs> no, I know. it almost makes better sense to, to actually have these, these, and and, and not have a, a whole other pickup. That's yeah. Like, just put, like, just like, put, put the tank on the trucks, and, and then when it goes to the <coughs> it has the equipment with it. Uh, instead of having what this one pickup yeah, right, right. that you're relying upon somebody going and getting, and it's it's kind of like you know. I don't, well, I say that. <laughs> it's like any gear that you that you put on a certain truck and you, you expect it to, to show up and everybody relying upon that. When it doesn't show up, you got big problems. So if you possibly, if it isn't too cost prohibitive, you're better off to have your equipment on the truck, uh, on more than one truck. That way, when it shows up, it, it can actually do the job. So that would be my request: is that uh, that we buy a thirty-five hundred. Uh, gallon aluminum frame, aluminum frame dump tank from uh, Watts Welding for thirteen hundred and sixty-five dollars. Remember that we accept the bid for the aluminum frame.
Green Double Tank. I uh, second motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. The Watts. The Watts welding. Husky 3,500 gallon dump tank with a limited frame for $1,365. have had some folks that have wanted to burn. Um, I told you last week it, it hasn't gotten any wetter. It's just as dry. Um, I, I had thought about this uh, from a standpoint of uh, if somebody does have a, a request and it, and it isn't, uh, we have a standby policy now where we can come out with a standby. And uh, I would be open to allowing that but they'd have to go through a standby, and, and our, our folks would have to, to uh, pre-assess it to even say that it's going to be safe enough even to do that. <coughs> but I don't want to be completely inflexible, and, and somebody uh, has a pit or something, and it's, and, it's pretty, and it's pretty refined to the pit, and if a truck can, and there's nothing on the perimeter, and, and a truck can stand by and make sure that we don't have any sparks flying off, I, I don't have any problem, and, and if we did that, um, we would what we do is go out prior to and just even make sure that mm -hmm. that it's going to be a doable deal. If if you if you don't have any uh, opposition to that, if, I mean there there would be times that you know they're going to call us out and we'll say no, it's it's still too uh, too big deal. Well, or it's just not a not a not a good thing. I don't have a problem. No, I don't either. Okay. We will, we'll let folks know, we'll let our dispatch know that that, that is an option. Uh, certainly we're going we're to take a, a strong safety approach and uh, we won't even let the state necessarily have the, you know, the fire crews make that determination. We'll send out probably a TDA to go out and take a look at the fire crews. So last minute request probably will be denied because we won't be able to go out and Check it out. Well, Sunday I mean, afternoon, yeah. somebody calls and they want to burn. Standby stand is $100, is that right? I believe it's $100 per truck, and that's for two hours. For the minimum. Because the wind would have to be absolutely zero. Wind would have to be dark on real low, and uh, and anything in close proximity. That's Because everything is just. That's very few just days. Mm -hmm. That's very few days, but the wind is yeah. absolutely zero. <laughs> yeah. Even the yeah. buffalo grass is crunchy. Price, it is. Crunchy is the word. Now, the only other thing I have is um, window bids. Um, I am not a construction person. I, I just made a couple. Of, we, we have, and there's one other one that I, that I apologize because I don't have it, and it was from Jeff Williamson. And, and that was, he threw it into his total bid. He put it in his total bid. And the, um, the bids, are from Pratt class, Great Bend class, and then uh, Jeff. And uh, Great Bend was $826.25 per window. Uh, Pratt's was $720.90 per window. And Jeff's was $545, I think, maybe $25 per window. Here's the, here's the problem. I, I, I don't think we're looking at apples and apples here, especially. I think we are with Pratt and Great Bend, but not, um, not with uh, Mr. Williamson. And the other problem is that uh, he's at least four to five weeks out. Who, who is? Jeff. So the, the problem with the low bid is I, I, I don't think we're getting exactly the same windows and, uh, and, our, and our timeline is. What did you specify what kind of windows would you? Well, I, I didn't because I don't, I don't know that much about, I mean, about windows and different differences of, of windows. Um, I'm, I'm told from Jeff that the windows would be like was out and just recently installed at the shortstop. I would kind of prefer that they have aluminum clad, you know, all the way around them, uh, and I believe that's what Pratt and Great Bend did. So they have aluminum frame all all the way around it, and not so much a uh, steel painted. Like a, 
frame. But, but the biggest problem is the five weeks. Uh, Troy Williamson, who's doing the project for us, really would like those windows in as soon as possible. Pratt can do it in 10 days. He's just tied up with a lot of work. And, and he has to order his windows. These guys make them. Uh, so I, I, I know there's a pretty good price differential, and even one is um, local. But uh, his time on them, then we get to it, is, is way out there. And Troy would really like to have the windows in so he can, when he's doing the project, he can finish off around the windows. Because he's doing the sheetrock work also. So either crack glass or crack men? What? Well, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, if if your preference is that uh, that you want to take a look at the windows out at the uh, shortstop, um, Pratt is supposed to get us a sample, uh, and they will have it here this afternoon. If your preference is to, to take a look at that sample and compare it, then we can do that. Um, it, it'll put us another seven days behind, but we can do that. But I, I think there is a fair difference in the, in the windows. You, you've seen them? I mean, you, you've compared them? Yes. Well, I hate taking the business away from the local. I, I do too. I just and spending more money to do it. I mean, sometimes, uh, sometimes when you, you know, Troy wouldn't bet it because he don't do windows. And he said, uh, and, and I think, you know, sometimes you, when folks do all of everything, uh, that really isn't maybe your, your I don't want to say expertise, but, but you don't have the equipment to, to build them like the folks that are doing them as a, as, as a window company, if that better makes sense. <laughs> I, I'd certainly bring the sample in next week, and in the meantime, you could take a look at what's out at the, um, at the short stop, if that would be your preference. Short stop in St. John? Yes. What ones did you put in out there? Uh, just some fixed glass windows. Um, the front, the front. These are you. Mm -hmm. The so windows look good. I, uh, the windows themselves, I mean, glass to glass, but I guess, I don't know. But uh, the frames, I don't think, look quite as as, as sharp as the, the manufactured window companies. But uh, we, we can certainly. Steve, are these insulated that. windows, e, low E, all yes. that? Or? Yes. Wait and see the see the one. So you guys can actually take a look at them. How much more difference in money are we talking about? About 175 dollars for a window. And how many windows? There's four, four and actually uh, they will do two at a time. What I wanted them to do, and, and Pratt will actually do that. Great men wouldn't, but they were the higher bid anyhow. Uh, Pratt will do one. I mean, two at a time. And uh, I I kind of wanted to do that just so we can keep a. Uh, an eye on the total funds that we spend, so we don't. Uh, I, I want to do the other two windows, but I want to make sure that we have the monies to do that out of the project. So I'll, I'll let them actually just do two if, if that's the route we go. Uh, actually, whomever would just have two made, and that way they can go ahead and get busy and get them in too. Well, if you're short on funds, I mean, you know, you're adding seven hundred and fifty dollars. But I don't think we're going to be short on time. It just makes sense to be careful. careful. I don't know what to say. But just hold up a week. Take a look, and, and I'll, I'll bring in the frame of the. I think so. I'd like to. Yeah, that would. Be, and in the meantime, you uh, just take a look at the ones up there. Um, but you'll have you'll have a sample of what they're doing. So what you're yes. Yes. And then just remember, the other, the other part of the equation is that it's four to five weeks out with Jeff. So it's, Troy's not going to like that much. <laughs> okay, that's Great. all I have.
Two, three, I guess I'll make a motion we approve this tax roll correction. I'll second it. <laughs> and it's been moved and seconded. We have to accept this tax roll correction. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carry. Anything else right now? I, I'd like to have the executive session just discuss and I'll take the first day probably 15 minutes. I'll second that motion. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we go into executive, executive session for 15 minutes to do that. Discuss non elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 This would be a membership to the Great Plains Economic Development, whatever it's called. Development. Great Plains Development. Yeah, I, we haven't passed on that, so I, I think it's. Be benefited to community if they work with community on different things. So you make a motion, man. Go ahead. I'll make a motion. We uh, uh, pay our annual membership for 2011 and uh, 86840. It's a great place. Development. Yeah, not even development. Yeah, just development. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Anything else? We're done.